Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jarrett Johnson. I'm joined by the Mighty Joe Yeager. Well, Mighty Joe, we uh, we already had a video come out, kind of previewing fall camp and a little bit of the season, just some of the things we're keeping our eye on. But we intentionally avoided the quarterback battle, uh, a three-way battle between Tyler Shuck, Donovan Smith, and Baron Morton. Uh, so I wanted to wanted to devote just a video all to itself to that, and I really want to get your opinion on the way you think it will shake out and and then also who do you like who do you who would you like to see be the the starter for texas tech right right yeah well you know i mean uh there was an article that appeared on the site that was by another uh big 12 writer i believe okay or uh, another uh, 247 writer excuse okay. me and he, he wrote an article about basically ranking uh the presumed oh, starting yeah, quarterbacks yeah. of the big 12. uh and uh, he had tyler shuck as a starter and he was at the bottom of the stack wow. number 10. Okay. Uh, well, you know, um, he may be the starter. He may not be the starter. If he is the starter, it's possible that he could be number 10 in the Big 12. Really? Uh, it's possible. It's huh. also possible uh, that he could uh, absolutely blow up and be number one. And I wrote a comment in this saying that basically uh, all the quarterbacks in the Big 12 as a group are not a hugely impressive no. Uh, bunch. They really aren't. There's nobody. In other words, I don't think that it's going to be rare that one particular team in a Big 12 game is going to have a huge advantage at the quarterback position. Yeah. I think they're all going to be more or less kind of on the same level. Uh, now, if we were to accept uh, that Tyler Shuck is near the bottom of the presumed starters in the Big 12, if we accept that, uh, okay. However, you also have to factor in Donovan Smith and yeah. Baron Morton. Uh, and I think if you were to look at quarterback rooms in general and, and rank the rooms right. of Big 12 teams, well, yeah, yeah, all those guys, where would Texas Tech come in then? Be at the, the, the top, they would right? have to I mean, be yeah. at the top or if not the very top itself. Right. Uh, because, I mean, you know, it's commonplace, fairly common, uh, for a team to have a couple of good quarterbacks and you have the old quarterback controversy. Mm -hmm. Uh, competition thing going on uh, that that's not all that uncommon but to have three uh, that are all sort of right there and three that you yeah. feel like you can win games with, with any of them under center yeah. uh, that's an extremely rare thing uh, and then we hear that there are packages that are set up for all three of these guys mm -hmm. I mean it's not inconceivable if, if what we're getting is the square biz uh, that all these guys could play at least a snap or two in every game this season. Yeah. You know, and I'm not predicting that that's going to happen, but it's not out of the question. You know, and if that did, I, I mean, that would be an extreme, extreme rarity. I know that's never happened at Texas Tech, yeah. and I don't know wherever it's happened anyplace else. So it's uh, the depth at the quarterback position is really unreal. That's that's the interesting thing. It really is. I honestly like to me like if I was laying odds in Vegas, if that was my job, I'd say odds are that Tyler Shuck is going to start. Uh, and that there will be packages for Donovan Smith, especially short yardage, goal line stuff. I don't know about the packages for Baron Morton. Yeah. We'll have to see, you know, about that. I'm just a little skeptical of that. Uh, then again, like uh, according to your critical 20 list, I mean, you think Baron Morton may be the best of the bunch, and he certainly had the best spring game, and he's one of the highest rated guys you've signed in the modern recruiting era. So, I mean, I'm a huge Baron Morton fan. I think he might be the future, but I really like Donovan Smith. I mean, he won that. He started that game against Iowa State. You won. He, you know, was amazing against Mississippi State. Um, 6'5", 240. He doesn't get enough credit for his arm. I hear people talk about him. Can he play receiver? I mean, maybe he could, but the guy's a quarterback. He played one year of receiver as a junior in high school because the quarterback on his team was going to Penn State. Uh, and I saw him at Friendship. He was amazing. I came away shaking my head. He was amazing. Uh, and. Last year, he had ups and downs as a redshirt freshman quarterback, but he won two big games. And I think, and I've said this multiple times before, but the guy's a gamer. So one of those guys, he might miss a couple passes, like, oh, he should have gotten that. But then third and 12, and he's got a guy hit, barreling down, about to hit him in the mouth, and he throws a perfect pass to move the chains when they need it in an important part of the game like we saw against Iowa State. That was when uh, uh, Miles Price got butt hurt as he so you asked him about you thought he got knocked out he goes no i hurt my butt i got i think he actually said i hurt my ass <laughs> which was one of the better uh press conference moments of last season uh but no I, I i like all three even i do like tyler shuck there's a lot of potential there the guy throws a beautiful ball has an amazingly strong arm very accurate like when you see him at practice and stuff like that so and he can run 
I think he runs a 4.7, so he can move the chains too. All three guys can run, so that's one of my prerequisites, my Joe. So, I, you know, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed either way, but I, everybody has their favorite, which is what makes the quarterback battle, uh, you know, r really interesting in my opinion because they're all three can play you can win with all three of them so we'll see how it shakes out but for now my joe great stuff as always thank you all for watching and until next time